Amen. Hi there, everybody. It's Pastor Barry, and we welcome you to uh, the Thursday Healing uh, School, Thursday Healing Service, whichever. It's probably around 6.30, and uh, we already taught this during the Healing School hour, but I want to teach it to you tonight. This is good stuff. It's about Jairus, that Pharisee whose daughter literally dies, and let's see what Jesus does. So let me pray real quick. Father, thank you for the word. And thank you, Lord, for so many uh, just uh, very, very important things to teach out of this message. I ask you to help me, Spirit of God, to teach it properly. And we thank you for that in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, here in uh, Matthew, excuse me, Mark chapter 5, this is going to be the story about J. Iris, who was a Pharisee. All right, so uh, Mark 5, 21. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. Amen. A great multitude came to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Um, you can still come to him. Imagine that. Hallelujah. That was then, and, and he was a man anointed by the Holy Ghost, and he's allowed us to have that same power, amen, with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so people in need of healing can still come. They can come to a church that believes in it and get that same power that Jesus Christ used to heal people. Amen. Uh, Luke six seventeen says that the people came to Jesus to hear him, and to be healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's still in effect today. What an honor. What an honor. So they, people have to know that he still heals. That's, now that's in the word of God. This is not the opinion of our church. This is not the opinion of myself or, or Jen. This is what the Bible says. If it's not in the Bible, then we have no business teaching it. Amen. Hallelujah. But, um, born-again, spirit-filled Christians have access to the same healing power that Jesus Christ healed by. Amen. Now notice it says there that he was by the sea. Amen. It don't matter where he is, come to him. Amen. Go where he is because if you're in need, you want to go and, and, uh, and be where he is taught, be where the people that teach him believe that he still heals. Amen. Praise God. So make sure that he is there in, in all the same uh, power that, that when he was here on this earth. Amen. What an honor to continue doing his work. Verse 22. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Amen. Now you understand that the Pharisees hated Jesus. Oh, my goodness. And they hated him not for any good reason. There were no good reason to hate anybody, but they hated him because they were jealous of him. You know, and all of a sudden, they had, you know, they had all the attention of the people, and now Jesus comes along, and he's getting all the attention. And then he starts healing and uh, teaching like no one else did, and they just resented him and hated him out of, out of jealousy. Amen. But now think about it. The Pharisees grouped together, hated him, but Jairus, he was a Pharisee, and Jairus was looking for Jesus. Jairus knew that Jesus Christ healed. His little daughter was at the point of death, and he had a need. And I, what I like is that Jesus Christ is, well, you Pharisees, you all don't like me, so I'm not going to help you one bit. No. He treated everybody as an individual. I think that's just so wonderful. Amen. So, verse 22, again. And, and notice, he fell at his feet. Jairus, that powerful uh, Pharisee, that powerful religious man, uh, was humble. He had a need, and he was going to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he fell at his feet. He worshiped him. Amen. 
he had to know that he was the Messiah. Amen. Praise God. Because nobody was doing what Jesus was doing back then. I like this guy. And, and we're going to see um, those religious leaders never went anywhere alone. They were always, you know, had followers with them. But um, the other Pharisees didn't like him, but he didn't care. He had a need and he was going to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. It said in that verse 21 that there was a great multitude of people. I was thinking about this. Most likely, many of those people were in the synagogue where Jairus taught. And then, and see, here he is uh, falling at Jesus' feet, uh, asking him to come. Amen. He didn't care. He loved his little girl. Plus, if she was at the point of death and then he really didn't believe that Jesus could heal, he wouldn't have left that little girl. Amen. I, I, I just, I, I didn't know, obviously, Jairus, but I sure liked that fellow. Praise God. He didn't think what other people thought. He knew Jesus had the answer, and he also knew that his religion couldn't heal the girl. Wow. It didn't have any answers. All the religion that he had could do is tell you what to do and what not to do. Hallelujah. But Jesus brought not only power, but he brought love, and he, and he brought, you know, a, a real desire to help people, including the ones that hated him. Amen. Number three, uh, 23, excuse me. So Jairus fell at his feet and begged him, earnestly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, Jairus knew that he could heal. Praise God. Never be ashamed, praise God, or, or, or too proud to come to Jesus Christ for healing. Amen. Hallelujah. The uh, religious leaders knew that he could heal. Amen. They just hated him for it but not Jairus, because Jairus had a personal need. And Jairus said to Jesus, please come, lay your hands on her, and she will live. She'll be healed. His faith spoke. Amen. He believed that, and now Jesus is going to follow him. Why? Because Jesus follows faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So, so Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him. Uh, and, and, and thronged him. What do I have for that? Jesus went with him. Jesus always followed faith. Je the multitude followed and thronged Jesus. People are hungry for the, for the supernatural. And they're hungry for healing. They're hungry for reality. And reality is right here in this book. Amen. You've got to act on faith even in the midst of a crowd. You follow him wherever he goes. Maybe some of them were just curious. Maybe some of them were the other religious leaders that didn't like him. Jairus didn't care. And really, Jesus didn't care. He was going with Jairus to help that man. Praise the Lord. All right, so now we skip over to uh, verse 35 of this chapter. Amen. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Oh my goodness. A negative report it can be so, you know, t yeah. I can't imagine how that uh, discouraged him. Praise God. But you got to know that nothing's too hard for God. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and I like in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. See, Jesus knew that as soon as he heard that terrible news, he might begin to speak negatively, and that would hurt him drastically. So in essence, Jesus said, and I, I mean this kindly, Jesus really said, shut up. Don't, don't say anything. Just keep your mouth shut. Amen. Nothing's too hard for God. 
Hallelujah, I'm the Messiah. We're going to get the job done. Just, just, just believe that. I love him. Amen. It's vital to watch what you say during tough times. So very, very vital to watch what you say. Because people, uh, let's say if they're not Christians, if they don't uh, understand what the Word of God says about healing, that Jesus still heals today, they can say negative things, and that can drastically hurt somebody, take faith away from them. I have a minister friend that uh, his wife was uh, diagnosed with a serious condition, and he would not let the family members in to the hospital room until she was better, maybe because he was afraid of some of the silly things they would say. Amen. So Jesus said, don't, you know, watch what you say. Praise God. He was close enough, I like this, to hear uh, the negative news. And, and, and I, I want you to know that when you're going through something, Jesus Christ is close to hand. I love that. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is right there. Praise God. All right. 37. I like this. He said to Jairus, don't be afraid. And then in verse 37, and he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Amen. He permitted nobody to follow. You can't let everybody come with you. This man, you don't know what some people believe. Some people don't believe anything. Hallelujah. So he, over the years, Peter, James, and John were, you know, the very close with Jesus Christ and he knew what they believed and they believed in him so he could take them along but there were some he could never take because they they didn't understand and they'd say crazy things and that would only uh, make the problem worse praise God the Bible says in first Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 verse 12 know those that labor among you that's so important now, it doesn't mean that if people don't believe now that they'll always be that way. If they mean business with Jesus, eventually as they hear the word of God, they'll begin to realize they can change their you know, ideas and their thoughts, etc. But initially, you just got to watch, praise God, especially new believers, because they're coming in and with no knowledge of the Bible. I surely had no knowledge of the Bible. I never knew God healed. I never knew the negative words being spoken by me could be so detrimental, but hallelujah, we're learning. Praise God. Okay, verse 38. Where we are? There we are. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult of those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. Oh boy. They knew she, that she was dead. Amen. He knew the power of the Holy Ghost. He realized that he had the power to raise the dead. Can you imagine? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and they ridiculed him in, 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 in verse 40. Lack of faith excludes you from what God is doing. In other words, if, if you're, you're mocking, oh yeah, raise the dead, sure, sure. He can't let those people near that girl because those that were going to go with him, Peter, James, and John, they had the same faith he did because they had seen Jesus heal multitudes over, over that period of time. Amen. I like it what he did. Well, let me read verse 40 again. And they ridiculed him, but when he had put them outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him, Peter, James, and John, and entered where the child was lying. See, nobody else could go in. That's so smart. As you learn this stuff, you learn that there's some people you just you just can't trust. Now, now it doesn't mean that as time goes on you won't be able to, but right now when, when it's needed to have faith, if, if they're new or don't believe it yet, you, you've got to exclude him from, from excuse me, you know, exclude them from whatever you're doing. Okay. Hallelujah. Verse 41. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kumi, 
which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Verse 42, immediately the girl arose and walked. She was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. Amen. The Bible says in Luke's version of this, that when he raised her from the dead, her spirit returned. Amen. See, when someone dies physically, their spirit separates from their body, and their spirit, let's say in the case of this little girl, I'm sure her little spirit went to heaven, but Jesus called her spirit back, and once her spirit reunited with her body, she came back to life. Hallelujah. Miracles get the attention of people. You can imagine. She's dead. Everybody thinks that out she comes, and healthy and strong. Praise God. There is nothing, nothing too difficult for the Lord. Amen. Yes, let's just read one more verse. Well, it says there in verse 22, they were overcome with great amazement. Isn't that wonderful? We have the power to help people and do things that nobody believes can be done. And we don't do it by our own power. We do it by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it amazes people. And we want it to amaze people because when they're amazed and they're in wonder, it just opens their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what you want. You want to do miracles, but we're all going to pass away anyway someday. And that's okay, as long as you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In verse 43, as we conclude, he commanded them strictly that they should, uh, excuse me, he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that he should get, they should give her something to eat. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. What did I write down here? Only recovery, once the recovery was made in the natural, spiritual, natural and spiritual food is a must. For her to get strong, eating natural food is evidence that she's restored to full health, normal life again. I love that. Amen. There's so many points in that. But I think the takeaway from that is God loves us. And God wants you well, even at the point of where, where this dear little girl died. Hallelujah. Nothing's too difficult for God. Amen. You just got to know that he loves you and he wants you well. And he's got the power to heal your body if you're not feeling well. And I like to say, if you are, aren't feeling well, we'd love you to come over to the healing school on Thursday. We can pray for you, share the word of God with you. Amen. But... Uh, let me just pray for you if you're not feeling well, and then we'll do one more thing. Father, thank you. Thank you so much that Jesus Christ is the healer. Amen. Now, he raised that little girl from the dead. Amen. But so often, dear God, in the, in the Word of God, he healed multitudes. No one that ever came to him who was sick did he ever turn away. Did he ever say, no, it's not my will to heal you. He healed everybody that came to him. Amen. And Father, that continues because he healed as a man anointed by the Spirit of God. And we have that same Spirit of God anointing as Christians. And we can lay hands on the sick and they can recover just as they recovered when Jesus laid hands on them. So Father, please, in Jesus' name, uh, if there's anyone out there in need of healing, uh, we pray for them right now. And they can also come over to the church either on a Thursday or a Sunday or a Wednesday, and we'd love to pray for them and believe that Jesus Christ would remove that sin from their body. In Jesus' name. One last thing. Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. The Father sent him. Jesus willingly came to die for our sins. Imagine that. And he knew that he'd be beaten and brutalized because of, of jealousy and hatred. But he came anyway, and God the Father watched what they did to his son. And through the sacrifice of Jesus, God the Father forgave every one of us. But he said, the only way you'll ever come to heaven is by honoring what my son did for you. Amen. If you do believe Jesus is God's son, and you'd like to ask him into your heart, just say this little prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you came into this world, led a sinless life, and died for me. Come into my heart to 
to be the Lord of my life. You died for me, and I'll live for you. Have a live. If you did that, eternal life was just granted to you. Life forever and ever. We're going to leave this world someday. That's not bad. I'm not afraid of that anymore. But if we know Jesus, we'll spend eternity with the Father. How wonderful that is. Amen. One last thing before we close. On Sunday, we're going to have what we call the Fall Fest. All kinds of things going on at the church from 4 o'clock until 6 o'clock. We'd love to see you. You're, you're surely invited. Until next week, this is Pastor Barry and Jen. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in.